you've noticed I'm not your uh, previously hot MC. Um, I begged to get to do this introduction because I'm so excited about this. Um, let me tell you that Tyler McMullen has had a fascination with distributed systems that goes back years. Uh, frankly, I'm actually fairly certain that it goes all the way back to elementary school and his then unique idea for a homework distribution system um, that won him critical acclaim in the student body and actually garnered him recognition in the school's administration, which is why we will speak about it no more. But since then, he's brought that passion to his professional life, first at Scribd, where I had the great pleasure of working with him, and now at Fastly, where he's busy creating the most ridiculously excellent distributed dynamic caching system for web applications that you should be using right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler McMullen. Uh, like uh, Jim said, I'm Tyler. Um, however, despite what he says, I'm pretty sure there are several people in the audience here who know a lot more than me about distributed systems. Um, and so it's for that reason that like, this talk really isn't for those people, though. Um, this talk is more for people who are just thinking about starting to build their own system, think they might need to, or just are kind of interested. So the goal of this talk is not really to teach you how to build a system. Um, it's much more to teach you what to look for, you know, teach you what is interesting about it, and um, you know, hopefully you'll go out and uh, read and do it yourself later. Um, yeah, so uh, it turns out that this talk actually relies really heavily on a demo. Um, and so it's called Bum because I had the Bum gem, like I just had the name, and it's really short and easy to remember, so I figured everybody would be able to you know, type it in real quick. Um, so if you just run those two commands, if you're you know, willing to, um, Hopefully we won't destroy UCSF's network. Uh, so yeah, if it doesn't work, you'll get to see me cry and run off the stage. And so that'll be entertaining regardless, right? So um, actually, if, if it does fail, th that'll be a pretty good lesson regardless, just because uh, it points out the fact that building distrib distributed systems are hard, even after you've been doing it for quite a long time. So um, while you guys are doing that, hopefully everybody has this now. Sweet. Looks like people are starting to connect. What's that? Ah, Ruby 187. Sorry about that. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I was meaning to make it 1.9 compatible. I didn't have time. Leave me alone. Uh, so while you guys are doing that, uh, I want to point out two, the two main points of this talk. The first one is this. The only way to build a truly fault tolerant system is by making it distributed. Um, and I think I'll illustrate that point a little bit pretty well. Um, but the second point is, I think, equally important. Uh, a great way to destroy whatever fault tolerance your system does have is to make it a poorly built distributed system. And I think you'll see that um, because my demo was kind of hacked together in like a few days. So it's kind of a poorly built distributed system. So um, the point is this, though. Failures are going to happen. Um, in your servers, hard disks are going to fail. Power supplies are going to fail. Your kernel will crash every now and then on a Linux server. We see it happen all the time at Fastly. Um, network drivers fail, and more than anything else, like our own code fails. So consider this scenario. Um, you're building your very first Rails app, and you're going you're gonna to push it out online. What do most people do? They, uh, they go and they get one little server, possibly from you know, Linode or something like that, uh, and they put their Rails app on there. They put their database on there, and they probably put some sort of proxy on there, like uh, Nginx or Varnish or something like that. Um, and that will work great until one of two things happens. One, um, you'll get too much traffic, and you'll have to start distributing it just because you can't hold it all on one server anymore. Or two, you'll have your first catastrophic failure. And the point of this is, all of those things that I just mentioned, the hard drives failing, the fans failing, et cetera, um, anytime something like that happens on a single server system, your site goes down. It's down until it's fixed, right? Um, and so the only way, really, to make a system fault tolerant is by distributing it. And so then what do people do next? They, they'll typically they'll move their proxy out onto its own node, and they'll, they'll move their Rails app onto its own node, and they'll move their database onto a single node as well, right? And uh, you know, that, that, makes, that makes it better, right? Well, well let's actually see. I'm going to switch over to, uh, to the demo now. Wow, a lot of people connected. Very nice. OK. so. guys around and uh, 
first scenario, a really basic distribution system. Hey, you come up here. There we go. Okay. So, so we have a really basic distributed system here where we have where we have one node for the database, one node for the Rails app, and one node for the proxy, right? So, um, as part of this demo, the uh, we're going to build a little application. So if I click here on the proxy node, G 75 thank you. Pop it open here. This is the little app that these three nodes are making at the moment. It's really just a little demo thing. It's an interface for a very simple key value system, but it should work. We uh, type in key or value. Good. Hit enter. It'll very slowly go. Please. All right, this could be this could be problematic actually. Let's try it again. Aha, we are getting some timeouts. Okay, let's try this one more time. All right, so hacky now. You enter a key and a value. This is bad news. Okay. I think I can still get on with the point of the talk, though. So, the point of this is when something in your system fails with a three node system like this, it turns out that every single piece of this is still a single point of failure. So, by distributing this, you've actually just made your life worse. You've made your failure rate three times higher, <laughs> at least when you're considering things as simple as like hardware failures, failures and uh, kernel failures and so on. So, uh, to illustrate that point, if I go ahead and disable this one, um, so if you can't see that, what happened there is I clicked on the Rails node, it went a little bit like grayed out there. Yeah, essentially we're just like temporarily disabling it. When I click back over here to the proxy, it's a server error because we suddenly don't have anywhere to query anymore, of course. So if we turn it back on and click again on the proxy, really, you're killing me. Killing me. Ah. So, so essentially, what happened was the DB actually went down. Apparently, Demus just got uh, disconnected. I was afraid of this, but oh well. So, the point is, okay. What do people do next? The next thing that people typically do is they're like, okay, well, the biggest point of failure I really have is my Rails node. You know, that's that's the part that's going to fail most often. So, I'm going to distribute that. So, let's see what what do they typically do then. Wait for the network. That's what they do. Okay. So, you might end up with a system that looks kind of like this. And at this point, now if we click here on the proxy, you know, still works, great. Um, I can now disable one of these Rails apps and it'll still work. Great. Um, it isn't until you disable all of them that you start having problems. So a server, obviously. However, obviously, there is still a single point of failure in the system, um, that being the database and also the proxy node. So if we disable the proxy, or if we disable the database, rather, um, we'll get the same error that we had before, which is, which is a blank screen, great. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just move on. Jesus. <laughs> really? All right. It's killing me. All right, anyway. This is always the problem with moving things into production. There's always something different in production than there is when you're testing it on your own local network, right? So the next thing people typically do is they say, okay, the database is the new biggest point of failure. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to have a master node and I'm going to have some slave nodes, and I'll read from the slaves, and I'll write to the master. Right? This is the way typically people scale out MySQL. So, in this case, we're doing something very similar. Wow, you're kind of hard to read, aren't you? Maybe over here. Nah. 
I couldn't know. Anyway, so system so comes up. We can let's see, maybe it'll work this time. Is it gonna work? No. <laughs> Okay, well, the problem with this kind of system is that you can still have failures. Essentially, we've just taken that single point of failure and we've split it in half. There's still a single point of failure for writes, correct? Um, additionally, what can happen is, we can have communication errors between the master node and the slave nodes. And it's gonna be hard to, in, uh, hard to demonstrate because you know, the system isn't actually working at the moment, but, um, Essentially what would happen is, if we tried to write to the master node right now, it would work. We would write to the master node. And then we would try to read it back, and we wouldn't actually see it. And why is that? Well, it's because the master node can't actually talk to the slave nodes now, so replication is failing, or at least it's delayed. Um, and then once the links come back, things look better. So. Hey! Woo! I, I didn't think that was gonna be the part that gets the applause, but you know, all right. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so now we have our system, and for a lot of people, this kind of system is good enough. A lot of major, major websites run on something that looks very similar to this. You know, there's more nodes, there's more slaves, there's, you know, different masters for different um, portions of the database, but essentially, in essence, it looks a lot like this. Also, I like that person's name. That's pretty nice there. <laughs> um, so, let's look at something slightly different, though. Um, there's a principle in distributed systems called harvest and yield. Um, so let's say we want to add something to our, let's say we want to add something to our system. We want to add a stats panel. So we want to see just like how many, how many keys we have in our database, what's the most recently updated one, and so on. Um, so if we want to add something like this to our app, uh, it turns out that this really isn't all that related to what the app is actually doing. Like if that were to fail, it would really be a problem if the app as a whole went down, right? Because the user can still go there and accomplish what they need to do. Um, if you have a non-distributed system, this kind of thing can be particularly difficult. It's even more difficult um, for like monolithic Rails apps. You tend to see a lot of problems where like it's just like one little thing that's failing on the side and the whole site is done. Um, and so one of the things that I found that is particularly useful for this kind of thing uh, is ESI. And I will now switch over to that. I'll come back to that, maybe it'll like even itself out. Um, the point of this though is the following. Um, when you have a system like this where you have little pieces, little widgets essentially that are part of your app that really aren't necessary for the user to accomplish what they need, and it's okay for those to fail, um, this falls into something that we call harvest and yield. And harvest means this, um, the portion of the total data that is reflected in the output is the harvest. So, um, and then yield is the probability that you'll get any result at all. And so by allowing your harvest, essentially like how much of the data, how much of the site is being reflected um, to fall, you can increase the probability that the, uh, that the page will actually finish running. And so if this were properly operating, <laughs> I would demonstrate that. All right, I'm gonna try killing the server and then you people want to reconnect, hopefully we can make it happen, because otherwise this is going to be the most boring talk ever. All right. All right. So let's switch over to the ESI mode. Okay. Great. So you see now we have a special node that's just for stats. It lives outside of the rest of the, uh, 
outside of the rest of the application. <laughs> um, and so if we then click on the proxy here, we should be able to see something eventually. All right, well clearly this is not gonna work. So let me just uh, continue and make a few more points and then uh, we'll see. The point of this is really that, uh, that right, by allowing single parts of your system to fail without taking down the whole system, you increase the probability that your system as a whole is going to stay up. And since that's really the whole point of distributed systems, it's a really good goal to, uh, to try to accomplish. So given that the system is not working, I'm going to give up and uh, move on here. <laughs> There's a few more points to make. Failures happen, right? <laughs> um, Right, so what we were just doing there, we were attempting to go spot hunting, single point of failure hunting. And we, we found a giant single point of failure, which is my laptop, apparently. So, <laughs> um, right. Um, the point that I was ultimately going to attempt making here is that you can end up single point of failure hunting all day long. At some point, you have to wonder, um, does it make economic sense? You have to stop at a certain point. That's why a lot of companies end up stopping just at like distributing their database in the master-slave kind of system, as well as distributing the app nodes. Um, but if it really does matter to your company, then it makes a lot of sense to just continue. Um, and so that, that's ultimately the point. You don't want to end up with uh, the kind of situation where you just shot 2,000 pounds of buffalo and you really can't carry any more back than 100 pounds and it's kind of rough. So. <laughs> um, so Sorry for the failures here, but I'm Tyler um, at PB McMullen. Um, I work at Fastly.com, and I promise our system is a lot more stable than the one I just demonstrated. <laughs> 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 <laughs>